So women who have a, a mutation in either the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene have an increased risk of breast cancer over their entire lifetime and the risk of them getting a, a breast cancer is approximately 50 to 80 percent based on multiple published studies. And that's kind of a broad range, uh, but what it shows you is that not all women who have these mutations will get cancer, but the risk is high. And at this point, we're unable to pinpoint the risk for an individual woman down more than that, but we know that their risk is higher than 50 percent that they would get a breast cancer. What's important to remember is that these genes are actually quite rare in the population as a whole. Only about 1% of women or men have one of these mutations. So uh, generally we don't recommend testing on everyone in the general population because they are so rare. So the approach to considering who should be tested is really based on a, a person's family history. So if there is a family history or other family members who have been affected by either breast cancer or ovarian cancer, uh, those are the red flags that would make us think about maybe we should consider testing in this particular individual. In most women who would get breast cancer unrelated to one of these genes, their cancers would happen a little later in life and women who have one of these mutations would tend to start getting these cancers or they would become evident about 10 years earlier than what we would see in the general population. The first piece of advice would be to meet with your care provider to discuss what these options are in more detail. Uh, but the options range from more intensive screening, you know, looking harder to see if there would be a breast cancer that develops and catching it sooner by using more frequent screening and using more intensive types of breast cancer screening such as breast MRI. So that's what we would call surveillance. The second uh, major strategy to dealing with risk would be to consider taking a medication to reduce breast cancer risk and there are medications that can do that. And then a third strategy is to consider surgical treatments that would reduce breast cancer risk. And one approach can be actually removing a woman's ovaries and that reduces her risk of breast cancer by about 50% by changing the hormonal uh, balance in the body. And then the last option is removing all of the breast tissue with a bilateral mastectomy. And that reduces the breast cancer risk by about 90 to 95%. And you know the choice of which of these approaches is right is very individualized for each woman based on what their goals and, and preferences are. For the general population of women who don't have a family history of breast cancer, we recommend that they have what we call breast health awareness, being aware of if there are any changes that they notice in their breasts, keeping up with um, screening uh, with their care provider, and those are things that can be discussed on an individualized basis with your care provider. I think it's great that Angelina Jolie was willing to share her experience with the public uh, so that it raised awareness among many women about the fact that these mutations are possible to have and what their implications are. The important thing to remember is that uh, most women will not have one of these mutations and that managing breast cancer risk is really an individualized uh, management decision and process that needs to happen with a woman's care provider on an individual basis.